And here you go. So Jordan just using Aztecs. He's already used Mayans. So Britons and Berbers are the two civs that Jordan has left. Indians is left for Viper and Ethiopians. And that's going to be interesting. I think that either civ for either player, depending on the matchup, regardless of the matchup, could win. I don't think there's going to be any big civ wins. Now, there's certainly situations where some civs have advantages, but it all depends on how you play it. Cart Lover, welcome again from Melbourne. Match point, got to use Berbers. I would probably use Berbers in this situation. Jordan thinking the same thing. WTF, third pause. I'm going to slap you in January, says Jordan. <laughs> That's funny. So there was a pause, if you, if you didn't hear that conversation, for whatever reason. Uh, Jordan in the blue, playing as the Berbers. And then, wow, Viper is so far away. Viper playing as the Indians. I don't know what the, uh, if the distance favors Viper or favors Jordan. They are so far away from each other. That's crazy. <clears throat> we'll, we'll talk about the maps, and then I'll try and talk about the, the different strengths that these certain civilizations have. So first of all, I quite like Viper's map, especially with the distance. Sure, the golds are in the same position here, but I doubt we'll see someone going forward once they figure out where their opponent is. So with a little bit of walling here for Viper, he has both of his golds and a stone walled in. And then here as well, an easy wall off between both tree lines and the edge of the map, and he's walled in. He can build TCs in here, and he can have a very healthy economy already as Indians, as creating bills is cheaper for them, and it only gets cheaper as the game goes on. Then you look at Jordan's map, and this, this is a map you consider calling a Rion, I think. And you know what? This, <laughs> very aggressive start for Jordan. I'm surprised, look at that. He didn't even scout his own base. He just went right to Viper's side. Immediately, a beeline to Viper's base. Which is actually bad for him. If he ends up stealing a boar, I don't even think it's worth it here. To play. Because look at that stone. Look at that gold. His main gold also on the hill on the left. He doesn't have many wood lines to choose from. Yeah, this, this is tough. Ballerina, thank you for the host. Chat, let's get some salutes in there for her and her viewers. And welcome. This is game four between Viper and Jordan 23. I think Jordan... This is just my, my sixth sense as a caster. I think he's going to call the re right at the four minute mark. He's hoping Viper will call a rehost before him so he doesn't have to waste his. If you're going to call a re, you've got to wait till the last second. Because there's a chance your opponent might call it. I assume we'll see the rehost, but I uh, could be wrong. And if I am wrong, and Jordan continues to play, I think he's at a huge disadvantage for his Viper. Ten seconds left. Jordan, are you going to play this one? Please call rehost. He hasn't scouted his base yet. Oh, he hasn't called it. He had to call it before four minutes. Oh, that hurts. That really, really hurts. Of course, it's just my opinion. Jordan might still be fine, but as the Berbers, you normally want to sieve, or sorry, a map like, like Viper has, where you can keep your stone safe. And now he sees this gigantic hill because he went for the aggressive lame. Viper's going to be licking his lips because look at that map for him with those easy walls. So now that we know this game is going to be played, let's talk about where the civs have strengths. And we'll start with the Indians, which is Viper civilization, as Viper's scouting out Jordan's base and might be able to seal this boar too. Viper civilization has a strength in the Dark Age, in the Feudal Age, and honestly, in the early Castle Age too. Because the one strength of Jordan civilization is that they can get to the Camel Archers, which are, which are pretty much unbeatable at this stage. The Viper, look at this. Look at this. He's just lying in wait. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny stuff. He, he was just trying to sit there so he could lame the villager as he came in. And Jordan spotted it and tried to quick wall the scout in. But uh, yeah, because the Indians have the cheap villagers, they can do so much more. They can up the castle faster. They can create scouts easier. There's no direct bonus to the Berbers in the Dark Age and the Feudal Age. This just shows you what having 
more scout HP can do for you. Viper annoying Jordan there a bit. So I really think if you're playing as Berbers, you need to have a map like Vipers where you're able to wall up. Or you need to be extremely aggressive early on and have success so you can have time to get to the Camel Archers and protect your base. And not going to be easy for Jordan to do so. Jordan sending some extra villagers to wood. But both players see how far away they are from each other. Which in my opinion should favor that defensive style which Viper is so good at. The Viper is clicked up to Feudal. Like I said, with a healthy economy, only 19 villagers. He will be going for scouts, but because his vills are so cheap, he can do that. Is he debating on building a lumber camp there? That would be a bad lumber camp, I think, if you place it in that little little hole. Maybe he'll stay on one lumber camp because he went up so early. Jordan has clicked up as well. Jordan has gone up on 22 population. I think both players would go scouts. It would not make sense to do anything else because of the distance between these players. Yeah, also, of course, King of Gods, the Indian camels can hold quite well versus the, the camel archers. I think Viper has chosen the right sieve. I think Jordan has too, but this is not a map you want to be in this position with with your civilization. Jordan going to probably build along the front here. Luckily for him, he can keep his wood safe. As the game goes on, it's going to be hard for him to get to the extra golds and the stones. But he can wall off his wood and wall off here too. And then the scout build shouldn't be too difficult for him. The Viper already uh, adding his stable. This is actually a bit late for Viper. He could have already had the stable built and creating scouts. But still, he'll have an advantage over Jordan. And you can see how easy this wall off is for him. He actually hasn't scouted his whole base. He maybe doesn't know how easy this is to wall off. Because he doesn't see this wood line. He's obviously going to house wall here. My guess is Viper is going to create four to five scouts, run around, probably not take any big engagements because he doesn't want to lose the, the numbers in the middle, and hold up the castle as fast as possible here. Just a beautiful map for Viper. This is as good as it gets. The one bad thing would be if they were close and then Jordan had gone forward, but they're so far apart that this is a great map. Can you please show Viper's Fog of War? Yeah, I'm toggling, if you look, I'm toggling in and out constantly. I get a lot of requests for that, but as I cast, I might not stay there and talk about it. But I'm, I'm constantly going to toggle in and out. <clears throat> you can see everything he needs to see. And his map is going to be full walled here in a second. And this as well, going to be full walled. Oh, okay. The Viper giving two free hits to the Spears from Jordan. You can tell just how much of a struggle it is to create scouts when you're Berbers versus... Creating scouts when you're Indians. Indians, you can have a bad start and still have little trouble with it. The Viper has even gone with a forward spear. And the scouts are going to fight. That's going to be a better fight for Jordan. But Jordan can't stick around here because of the spear. But look at this. There's been one, two, I believe there's three spears from Jordan 23. This is a defensive move. A Viper, not interested. Not interested at all. And going aggressive. So every single spear and scout he forces Jordan to make is a plus. Because that slows down the castle time. And Viper in a moment. They're going to be full walled with houses. He can do whatever he wants. He could invest in more scouts. But probably not worth it to do so. Nice job from Viper. He was, he was looking for that low HP scout. And he's found it. And again, Viper probably just going to try and keep his scouts alive, harass Jordan as much as possible, follow Jordan's army, but he most likely won't take any big engagements. Just wait for Jordan to slip up. And Jordan is walling the back of his base. He does have a stone back there. Maybe that'll be his one saving grace in this game if he wants to get to the Camel Archers. Both players engaging on the hill. I'm actually surprised Viper took that engagement. But it's a better engagement for him. I didn't actually get a good look at it. You see both players going for the weak scouts. And uh, one for one there. But that's two losses for Jordan. Just one for Viper. And as I say that, Viper loses his weak one. Which is at the back of the group. And yeah, Viper doesn't want to engage here now. But hasn't created a lot of scouts. 
Jordan actually leading in the kills. I think it was because of the spear, though. I think the scouts has been 3-3. Three to three. And, yep, one more scout gonna pop out for Viper. Right next to a stable. Jordan taking a fight where he probably shouldn't. He's gonna lose all of his scouts but one. Viper's actually gonna create another scout. So when you wall like this, you're actually in a position to be aggressive, and you can get away with it at times. The Viper over invests, he still has the walls protecting him. Uh, with that logic, you know, it's not a bad idea to create a few extra scouts to try and catch your opponent off guard. But Jordan has a lot of spears, so I don't know if that was a great move from Viper. I'd be very surprised if he creates any more. Jordan has had to go with a preemptive tower. Before he even sees archers, he's built a tower here. And he's going to wall off towards the edge of the map. And towards his house there. And that would mean he has a full wall base. He is on stone. It is so important for Jordan that he gets a castle up. Especially now because his map is awful. He'd have to build the castle here. Or he'd have to build it up on this hill. If he can do it though, that's the one unit that can change the game. But you have to keep in mind, Viper's going to have a stronger boom with his civilization. There's no hole there, right? <laughs> okay, no hole. <laughs> uh, Viper will have a stronger boom, and he'll have the Indian camels. Jordan has done well, though. Very, very well. Didn't take any big losses. 700 food for him right now. 192 gold. Has the stone coming in. Wall's coming up. We'll need a quick wall here. If he wants to keep the scouts out. These are just the small things that add up. This can be a real annoying factor. Having to send a villager to build a palisade wall or repair a palisade wall. That's just an annoyance. And Viper's also clicked up the castle. So now Viper with 37 villagers. So that accounts for the later click. About a 20 second difference there. And Jordan sending more villagers to stone. And we know what he's going for. Now he can create a few of his own camels. The camels will not be as strong though. So he's building for the Camel Archers. And I have to say, with Jordan's map, he's done a great job here. Very impressed that he's able to create his base like he has, wall up like he has, put himself in this position. He's waiting for his spears to run around. So he doesn't even want to build a palisade wall. He's just waiting, repairing. Just wants the spears to take care of those scouts. But Viper's not going to be worried about that. And Viper now expects that the Camel Archers will be on the way too. But look at Viper's resources. He can create camels out of one stable. He'll probably add two town centers immediately. And Jordan's economy will be behind because he's had to be on stone. And he's going to be building a castle. Now the areas to focus on would be the front resources for Viper then. So Viper has two golds in his base and a stone. Beyond that, nothing. Also, all of his wood lines. Well, not all of them, but most of them are forward. He does have this one. So the camel archers can kill Vils here. Viper might choose to TC this side of the wood, maybe? Uh, that way that the wood line's somewhat protected. But this stone, this gold, uh, this neutral gold, you better believe that Viper and Jordan are going to be grappling for that. And here go the villagers to build that castle. Uh, Viper has his scouts here, but there are the spears for Jordan. And Jordan just lacking the stone. And Viper can send the camels if he wants. Jordan needs the stone for this. I'm building houses till he gets the stone. Viper has the camels on the way. And it's going to take a while to get this castle up. Now he can wall in the villagers and he's going to do that. So the castle should go up. But just like I said, Viper going to add town centers. He's adding a monastery. He's adding a town center. He's adding a town center. So immediately two TCs. And Viper has all the map control right now. Uh, Jordan unable to add a second town center. And where's he going to put it in this map? He can really only put it here. So again, this is a game that Jordan23 won so bad. So bad. He's played so well in this best of five. I think with this performance, he definitely deserves to, to move on. Like if he was playing anybody else, I think he'd probably move on. But he's versus the Viper. And that's just how it goes with the, the seeding of the tournaments. Uh, two new town centers for Jordan. Not going to be easy for him to keep the vill production going, though. We'll keep an eye on the villagers. Viper's already ahead. But as you can see, he has these idle farms and idle vills. And he needs to then <clears throat> create villagers out of all these town centers, too. 
The Viper is also going to be thinking about locking down the other resources for Jordan, like this gold. Uh, <laughs> Viper being quick walled out. Had an opportunity to run in. Um, sloppy economy for Jordan. Doesn't have the wood for farms. I think he might fall behind with the production of the, the villagers. A Viper. Three TCs. He's even on stone, so that probably means a fourth TC for him. I would not be surprised if at the, the 30 minute mark, Viper has 15 more vills. And that's the strength of the Indians. Now, if the maps were flip-flopped, might not be that much of a difference because Jordan would have had the better map, boom. Jordan wouldn't have had to create all those offensive walls. And Viper immediately getting those relics. That's why he built that monastery. He knows what's going to happen here. He knows it's going to go late game. He's got one on the way in. And notice how Viper's been using his scouts and his camels to scout the rest of the map. And also Jordan has his scout here. So he's aware. He's aware of the situation too. And Jordan also, credit to him, did add the monastery. <laughs> he's sending the camel archers and his own monk after that monk there. And let's see here. He can kill the scout. Maybe convert the camel. Maybe convert the camel. No, he's not going to get the conversion. Yeah. <clears throat> now the, the grappling over the relics begins. Yeah, it's possible Jordan could have built a TC here. But this is probably a better place for a castle. It's just always going to be awkward. Viper now with uh, six villager lead. Viper has one relic already. He's going to have two monks, and he's going to have enough camels, I think, to keep Jordan away from this. That being said, Jordan already got a conversion. Jordan's sending two monks of his own. There's two relics here now. And Jordan will know every time this is picked up, because he sees the relic disappear. Let's see what Jordan is able to do. He's just going to let the monks go away, I guess. And he's going to raid with the camel archers. This is where the build difference can be brought back. This is where the harassment can begin. As the Camel Archer's mass, it's going to be so difficult for Viper to deal with this. In fact, I think this is an, an early move, but I really like the idea for Viper. I think as the game goes on, what you're going to want to do as Indians is go Elite Skirmisher and go Camels. I'm surprised Viper's trying to tech into that right now. And Viper's taking some big losses there, losing the Monk and also losing a lot of Skirms. Having to run away from the Woodline, but... Again, I like the move from Viper. It might just be a bit too early for his economy because he does not have any upgrades on the Skirms. Now he's adding stables behind and he's pretty much fallen back to going only camels. This is going to give Jordan an opportunity if he scouted it to get the relics. No, he didn't see that. He also doesn't see this one. He does see this one, but that's far away. I'm probably better off keeping his monks here now. Uh, Jordan going to delete that camel so he doesn't lose it to Viper's Monk. Understandable decision. And Viper's going to... Or sorry, Jordan will go for a Siege Workshop. And I was wrong about the Vill difference. I'm okay with being wrong there. I just I just say things knowing I'm going to be wrong. To keep you guys on your toes. Kappa. Jordan actually very close. And Jordan taking the map control, which if he holds, he will be next to the stone. Yeah, we have the Jordan 23 take my energies in the chat. I at least want to see a game five myself here. It's hard for me to choose between these guys. I can't really have a favorite. It's a lot of skirms for Viper, which means a Magna will be needed for Jordan. But he's gone with the battering ram. Look at Jordan's resources. Okay, he's going to lose the monks. Sad, they were old anyway. I mean, they were, they were near death. It doesn't matter. He's going to click up to Imp before Viper, and why is that? Why? Because Viper has cheaper fills, T90. He should be clicking Imp first. Well, no. Viper has researched Bodkin Arrow for his Skirmishers, which is expensive. And he's also had to create Skirmishers, which is also expensive. And a lot of Camels, and a lot of Camel upgrades. So now Viper has a lot of map control. But... He is going to be up against an Imperial Age Berber player. A lot more on stone for Jordan. I think the ideal composition for Jordan is go Light Cav and go Camel Archers. The Light Cav to counter these Skirmishers and the Camel Archers to kill opponent Camels. If you can afford it, going with your own Camels is just fine. But that's a lot of gold when you want to get Elite Camel Archer and all those upgrades. 
But there's definitely some things that Jordan's not going to be happy with when he watches this recorded game. And that's going to be not seeing this relic and not seeing this relic. Viper, I believe... Oh, hold on. Yeah, Viper will be slightly disappointed too. He doesn't know about that one. He does know about the one in the back of Jordan's base, but that should be a freebie for Jordan. And look at this. As Viper sends a camel out, the monk... Ah! Ah! Look at that! He's a wizard. You can't see him. Viper's looking for this guy. And Jordan instead is, is focusing on this engagement. Oh no, you need to be you need to be careful, Jordan. You need to be careful. Viper's looking for you. Run away, man. Run away. Look at the difference. Look at that. So close. That's hilarious. I love it. And Viper assumes that the monk has already run away because he has the camel patrolling looking for it. He assumes that the monk has already run away, but no. He's taking a breather. And there's the imp upgrade for Jordan. Jordan on two castles now and a little bit of TC to protect his gold. <laughs> Viper's got to be so confused. Like, where, where's the monk at? Like, come on. Now, will he send his monks away? Nope. Jordan doesn't know about these guys. Oh, he is sending them away. Of course, they're focusing on hundreds of different things at once. Does Viper see this? I don't know if he does. He sees the TC. I think that might be why his camel is arriving. Uh, TC... Gonna go up for Jordan because his camel archers have arrived. And the monk gonna make it back. Unless Viper sends his army this way. Oh, it's been pretty funny to focus on this poor monk. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, he's dead. At least he, he got close to Jordan's base. And Jordan pushing forward now. He has his camels. And he has his camel archers, but Viper has a castle on his hill. Viper's also on his way to Imp. Viper's still fine. Viper actually with a much stronger economy now. And that little bit of map control gave Viper an opportunity to get the stone and the gold. A Viper also going to be sending monks here, I imagine. A Viper doesn't have the resources at the moment. And the, the heavy camels, uh, you can see these are just regular camels. They're so strong. I don't know if the heavy camel move is smart from Jordan. That's an expense, man. But he's on two castles. He's not far away from three. Maybe he thinks he needs a stronger meat shield than the light calf. But right now, Jordan sees the neutral gold. He's going to try and TC that. And also his camel archers are going to try and trap these camels from Viper. A Viper sitting at home with the rest of his army. <clears throat> and Viper taking an engagement he does not want to take here. That's for sure. Versus enemy heavy camels and versus enemy camel archers. That's a good engagement for Jordan 23. Well, that means this TC should go up. And if you're Jordan, you probably build your next castle in between these TCs. Maybe on the hill. And that's what he's going for. A chemistry on the way. So full upgrades and attack soon for Jordan. And this game is very, very interesting. And now a castle for Viper. It's, it's going to be a long game here. Game 4 is going to be a very, very long game. But if you're talking late game, you're talking two of the best late game sips. With the Imperial Camel available for Viper. And the Camel Archers available for Jordan. Now I understand there's some drops, guys. Uh, so far, so good it has been today. But I can't do anything about that if it... If it continues to worsen, maybe I'll close some programs. But, uh, you know, as you guys know, I'm moving out in a couple days now. So my my apologies there. It happens on occasion. I'll try not to move around too much. But that's a good victory for Jordan. He has stopped that castle from Viper. A Viper had to pull back and he can't take that gold. And Jordan's already here with his trebuchets. And Jordan should be able to get that relic that was dropped earlier. And should be able to get this relic if he sees it. And this relic if he sees it too. Both players could get that. Imperial Camel on the way for Viper. And might as well be Paladins. In, in Camel Disguise. They're so strong. And there's the first trebuchet for Jordan. Alright, there's the trebuchet firing. And this gold is the talking point of this game. After 40 minutes... 
some some exchanges that have favored Jordan. This gold is the talking point. Now Viper takes one engagement. His heavy camels are going to be Imperial camels. They're going to be so strong that I don't know if Jordan will be able to come back. But the same goes for both players, honestly. A camel archer is going to be elite soon. What can Viper do now? Well, Viper has a good mix. This is really all he can do. He can't do anything else. He can't mix it up. He has to go for fully upgraded skirms and Imperial Camels. That's what Viper's forced to do. He's killed the Treb. But Jordan has gone for his own heavy Camels as meat. I love the aggressive move there from him. He's still missing line of sight on that Relic. Viper is as well. A Viper a little bit closer to seeing it. I'll close out every single program I have open right now. Um, however, I don't think it'll help too much. Not much I can do with a shitty ISP. And there is the upgrade for Viper that we were all waiting for. And it's certainly one that Jordan was expecting. And Trebuchet's looping around to this choke point. This could be good or bad. I think this could be bad for Viper if he doesn't get his camels in front. He has his skirmishers in front. And Jordan just researched the upgrade where his camels regenerate. So not, not only are they arguably the strongest unique unit but they also regenerate their HP now. A small fights over the extra stones. You can see Jordan has snagged them. A Viper going to see that. And wow, this is a huge engagement now. The castle is needed for Jordan 23. Viper using his skirmishers to kill these elite camel archers. Will Viper have the combo to beat these Berbers? And it looks like he does. He's taken out the castle. The Imperial camels, 160 HP with the skirmishers behind. I get the idea from Jordan to add in the heavy camels. Imagine if he just had light cav there. He would have got destroyed. And now Viper wants to build his next castle on this hill. A Viper choosing the Indians probably on purpose. Expecting the Berbers from Jordan 23. But if Jordan loses this fight, he probably loses the game now. Having already lost the castle. And he will lose access to his gold. And so far, so good for Viper. Imperial camels are tanky. And the skirmishers are there to deal with the, the camel archers. And that, I hate to say it, I hate to say it for Jordan. But at this rate, once this castle goes up, Jordan loses his production buildings. I think, uh, I still can't quite tell. I still can't quite tell. The camel archers are holding their own, but it looks like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I, I don't know what to say. This is actually a lot closer than I thought. I thought Jordan was going to lose that fight, and then he's going to call it the GG. The castle is going to go up. Jordan has lost the fight. He has lost his hill. He has lost his gold. But maybe he has enough camel archers left to hold. But certainly, that's a good fight for Viper. It's just ridiculous how strong both these army compositions are. <laughs> and uh, Jordan says, GG, make me proud. He, he can't do it without the gold. And... Uh, these guys obviously best friends and Jordan gonna be rooting for Viper in the later rounds That was a hell of a display from both players these games. We only saw four games but I think that The potential for Jordan is there in future tournaments to beat Viper considering he's only come back for What is it five months now? Has it even been five months? I, I'm not exactly sure in the timeline, but he hasn't been back for a long time. This game is so complex it's obvious that he has the skill, and uh, if he puts a little bit more time into it, I think he could maybe reach the very top again. Sad for Jordan that he had to face Viper this round, but uh, very good performance. Certainly the best performance versus Viper thus far, even though we only saw one round before it, but anyway. So Viper's going to move on. Jordan is now out of the tournament, and Viper has shown weakness. Viper has shown he can be beaten. The, the question then is, how many people can put on a performance like Jordan 23, right? And I think that uh, there's a potential for, for Stark or Vinchester to beat Viper, but you probably don't favor them. Whoever advances in their series, you probably don't favor them versus Viper. That's going to take Viper to the, to the semis after that. And then he could be facing a whole mess of players, but certainly Leary on the other side of the bracket, the first seed. He might be the guy coming for Viper's uh, throne. So there's the KD, there's the eco difference. Both players went for the strongest army comps you could possibly see with their civilizations. And it just was slightly better for Viper.
And here is the technology stats and the society stats. Very good game to close out the series. All right, awesome. It's not over, though, because in one minute, we are going to see Happy Happy vs. Leary. And that's a game that Leary could lose, too. Happy Happy, you never know he could surprise us. A great, great game, great set of games from Viper and Leary. And I'm going to need to take a quick break before the next set of games starts, but stick around because it'll be coming up in a moment. I'll have to get into the game, and I'll give you guys the Civ draft when it begins. But thank you all for being here again.